Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, which is all about income-oriented investing, how to generate passive income from a diversified portfolio of high-yield funds to reach financial freedom as soon as possible. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most talked about, controversial, and frankly, one of the most badly talked about and misconstrued and, you know, a fund that has a lot, a lot of misconceptions on the U.S. stock market. I'm talking about QILD, of course, and also its sibling uh, funds, XYLD and RYLD. So there's a lot of YouTubers, a lot of videos out there on QILD. I find mostly negative. There's some good ones that are just facts, but I find there's a lot of crap out there. So my intention with this video is really to cut the crap. It's to provide you with a solid understanding, just facts, no opinions of how QILD, RYLD, XYLD actually work how they work, what they're designed for, what kind of investor they're designed for. And to be honest with you, because they use a systematic approach, it's actually very easy to understand them and how they work. But you do have to dig a little bit uh, to fi figure that out. So hopefully by the end of this video, the whole objective of this video is by the end of it, I want you guys to really understand objectively how QYLD, RYLD, XYLD works, and then you can make a decision if it's right in your portfolio. And of course, um, you know these are listed on the American on the American stock market. But if you're a Canadian investor, which I know most of my audience is, this might be a very good video to listen to because QYLD, RYLD, and XYLD are all fairly solid positions. And HYLD, you guys know that this is one HYLD is one of my favorite all-in-one covered call ETFs run by uh, Hamilton. So all three of these are at HYLD. So it's worth understanding how these funds work. So hopefully by the end of the video, you'll understand you'll be a master of QYLD and you'll be able to explain it uh, to your peers. So let's get started. All right, everyone. So we're going to cover quite a few ETFs here. I'm going to focus really more on QYLD instead of XYLD, RYLD, and even DJIA. But the good news is, is that these four ETFs, these four covered call ETFs, all work exactly the same way. The strategy exactly the same. The distribution policy, which we're going to dig into, which is very important to understand, is exactly the same. The only difference is, even the management fees are the same. The only difference is the index that they cover. So QILD is the NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. So obviously, the index that it's trying to follow is the NASDAQ 100. We know that the NASDAQ has a lot more technology stocks, a lot more growth stocks. It's a lot more tech heavy, which means it's a little bit more volatile than XYLD, or the S, which is the S&P 500. So it's 500 stocks, a lot of the same stocks in the NASDAQ 100. So Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Google, Apple. But there's a lot more stocks. There's more value stocks in here. So that's XYLD. Okay, the S&P 500 covered call ETF. Then there's RYLD, which is uh, not the newest one. The newest one is DJIA, but RYLD follows the Russell 2000 index, a lesser known index that actually tracks smaller to medium sized company in the US, but there's 2000 of them. So that's the Russell 2000 covered call ETFs, which covers or follows the Russell 2000 index. And then there's a Dow 30 covered call ETF, DJIA is the stock symbol. This is their newest one. I, I think it's been out for uh, a year or less than a year, not that long. This one covers that other very, very popular uh, index that pretty much gives you a big representation of the overall U.S. stock market, the Dow 30. So the Dow 30 only has 30 stocks compared to, you know, 100 stocks, NASDAQ 100 or 500 stocks of the S&P 500, but it's mostly all value stocks. So these are a little bit less tech focused than the S&P 500, but it's 30 really, really important companies on the U.S. stock market. And of course, this goes for all four of them. If you scroll down, you could actually see the holdings here. So you'll recognize pretty much 30 of the 30 companies in the Dow, for example, Goldman Sachs, United Health Group, Microsoft, Home Depot, McDonald's, Visa, Salesforce, so really Johnson & Johnson, Chevron, et cetera, et cetera. So really, uh, I would say that this one is really the value, you know, value stocks index. Russell 2000 is the small to medium cap uh, companies. Then, of course, we have the S&P 500, top 500 companies. And then we have the NASDAQ 100, top 100 companies on the NASDAQ index um, on the NASDAQ stock exchange rather. So this is more, a, a little bit more tech heavy. So all four of them actually have the same complete strategy. They are all covered call ETFs and they write covered calls. Okay. You could see that here seeks to generate income through covered call writing, which historically produces higher yields in periods of volatility. That's, you know, that's common language for all covered call ETFs. When there's more volatility in the market, those premiums 
are much richer. So um, they don't write covered calls on individual stocks. They actually write covered calls on the index themselves or the corresponding uh, index themselves. And you could actually see that here um, if you scroll down and look at the uh, the holdings, if you expand it, and obviously, you, you know, this is the, the QILD, it's a NASDAQ 100. So we're going to see the top 100 stocks on the NASDAQ. So you'll recognize all of them. But if you scroll all the way down, you could actually see the call option, guys. It's right here. And NDX, that is the NASDAQ 100 index. So they're actually writing the call option on the index itself not on the individual stocks of the portfolio. And another thing that's really interesting that they recently added, you could actually see the details of the option, of the monthly option. So what QYLD, XYLD, RYLD, and DJIA do is every month, it's a, just a rinse and repeat strategy, guys. They write and at the money. So at the money, I'm just trying to look for it here. Um, where is it in the strategy? Uh, let's see doesn't say at the money anywhere here, but they basically write an at the money covered call, which is the most aggressive covered call you could write, right? If you're writing an at the money call, it means that if the NASDAQ is 12,000, if NDX, you know, if you just Google NDX, that you, you'll get the NASDAQ 100 index. So if the day they write the call, the NASDAQ uh, NDX is at 12,525, which was the case in the, the, the call that's active right now, they're writing the call at 12,525. So this is an at the money call, guys. It's whatever the index price is, they're writing a call on, on the exact same price, which means you're forfeiting all of the upside for the next 30 days in case the NASDAQ 100 index goes up. So this is a very aggressive covered call strat strategy. I don't like that word aggressive, but that's pretty much what it is. It's really to maximize income. Okay, so this is the biggest premium or the biggest income you could get is when you're writing at the money calls and they're writing it on 100% of the portfolio or of the value, right? So you see here the notional exposure, notional value is 7.3 billion and that will always correspond to the approximate value of the fund itself. So they're writing, this is the most aggressive covered call you could do everyone and at the money call on 100% of the funds value. So that's extremely important you understand this. So it's very obvious you need to understand this right away guys that this the all four of these ETFs the goal is really to maximize income, to maximize the monthly income on the corresponding index whether it's a Nasdaq 100, S&P 500. And it's pretty cool because you could actually see the the call uh, every month here, and this is, goes for all four of them, right? If you scroll down, you will actually see the call here and you see, you know, notional exposure. This is 2.6 billion. And of course, it's go going to correspond approximately to the net asset value or the net assets of the fund. So let's, what exactly does this mean? Because you'll see this is a short call. Whenever they're writing a call option, it's going to be a short call. So this is the S&P 500 call option. The strike price is 3920 right? 39.20. And um, if we just open Google, and by the way, the S&P 500 is SPX. So if you just put SPX, you'll see that right now it's out of the, it's, it's past that already. It's at 41.03 right now, which is exactly why the moneyness is 104%, right? So if the strike is 39.20, they wrote it at 39.20. If today this would be 39.20, you would basically see 100% here, right? If it would be 3,900 or 3,800, if it would be lower than the strike price, you would see 99%, 98%, which means that the call will not be exercised. It's going to expire worthless. So right now, if this call were to expire today, it's expiring here on the 21st of April. There's 15 days left till expiry. So this is very interesting. It's pretty cool that you could actually see the information of the monthly call that all of them write. This goes for all four of them. So right now this call, if for example, this is one day left or the expiry date is April 10th, as I'm filming this video, this would uh, expire, the, the call would be exercised, which means that you would be actually giving up all, you know, the, the, the entire, you're forfeit, forfeiting the entire uh, upside of the portfolio, basically. So it's, you know, obviously they're at the money call. So there's a much, much bigger chance that these calls are going to be exercised. And you might be wondering, well, if I'm giving up all the upside of the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100, 
Um, will the fund actually grow? Will it just keep going down? So this is a very common, common thing or, or common conception people have about these funds. And if you look at the stock chart, right, you could kind of see an overall downward trend, especially if the, you know, say NASDAQ 100 is going down, QYLD is going down as well because it tracks the same index. But then when it goes back up, there's a lot of drag. QYLD is going to go back up a little bit if the NASDAQ 100 goes up, but not by much. That's because of the covered call option, uh, which are very aggressive and you're giving up all the upside. But the good news is, is that in exchange for sacrificing that upside, you get a big, big premium, right? The more aggressive the covered calls are, uh, so at the money is the most aggressive, you're going to get a giant premium, which in turn translates to big monthly dividends. And that is really the whole point of these four ETFs. It's to generate as much income as possible on the corresponding in in index. So this is really designed for income-oriented investors where the primary objective is to maximize income monthly. So if you click on distribution history, for example, we'll look at QYLD. It's been giving monthly distributions for nine years running. Uh, all management fees, all MERs for all four of these are 0.60, by the way. So if you look at the distribution history, you could actually see every single month, every single monthly dividend. Now you'll see that they, they're different every month. You might be asking, okay, well, what, you know, how do I know what dividend I'm going to get or what, di sorry, distribution I'm going to get um, every single month? Well, the answer is very simple. So like I said in the introduction, guys, the monthly distri the distribution policy of these four ETFs is actually set in stone. It's a systematic approach. So all we have to do, the, the key document to really understand how the monthly distributions work is right here. You scroll down and it's right here, guys. The Global X Monthly Covered Call Report. This is the key document. If you open it, let's open it up together here. You see a summary of QYLD, XYLD, RYLD, DJIA. As you could see, the option moneyness at the money, percentage of portfolio covered, 100%. So this is probably the most, it's the most aggressive cover cost strategy you could do. So you're giving up all the upside for the biggest premium, biggest monthly option premium that you're getting, which again, you could actually track yourself uh, for all these funds here. So, you know, there's 15 days left. So let's say the NASDAQ, you know, takes a tumble in the last day and it goes under 12,525. The moneyness, the, the call will expire worthless, which is the best case scenario for holders of this fund. You want the call, you wanna get that big premium, but you don't wanna give up any of that upside. And by the way, these options, they're not settled, they're all settled in cash, right? Because they're, they're writing the call on the actual index itself, not on the stocks. So for all of these, by the way, that's why you'll always see a nice big cash balance in all these funds here. You see that here, five, you know, five and a half million dollars of a cash balance. That's the settle, the, the, the call option in case it gets called away. So the key again is this document. So it's, it's very easy to understand. Again, these ETFs, it's all the same strategy at the money calls on the index in themselves, 100% coverage. So whatever the fund is worth, that's gonna be the notional value like, like we saw. So here's the key guys, if you scroll down and they do have other, uh, by the way, they do have G versions, right? So QYLD, they have QYLG, XYLD, XYLG. They have G versions of the three uh, of Q, X, and R. They don't have uh, a, a G version of the DJIA yet. I don't know if they're going to come up with that, come out with that. But basically, it's the same exact strategy, except they're only covering 50% of the portfolio, right? They're still at the money. They're covering 50% of the portfolio instead of 100%. So what can you expect with the QYLG or XYLG or RYLG versus the D equivalent? Pretty much half the yield right? Because they're making half the premium, they're covering half the portfolio, but you're, you're capturing 50% of the upside in case the NASDAQ 100 goes up, the S&P 500 goes up. So it's, it's kind of like a half-half approach. It's designed for people who want, they want a little bit of income, they, but they prefer half income, half growth, whereas the Ds are 100% income. So this is just an FYI in case you want a half-half approach, you have the Gs instead. And they also have some sector specific Gs, financials, healthcare, information technology. So these are obviously, they're not based on indexes. Well, they are based on indexes, but they're sector specific. So TYLG is going to be only technology stocks, HYLG, HYLG healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. And these are also on 50%, right? So here's the key. If you scroll down, you could actually see 
every month the premium that the um uh, that the option is generating that at the the very aggressive at the money option premium and let's take a look at QYLD you could actually see um you know January February you see here the uh, this is how this is the proof you could see how valuable these at the money call options are right you're they're generating over 1% a month premium everyone and this could vary it varies because it's based on volatility the more volatile the market is the higher the premium so this is the premium that the fund is generating and this is the how much are they giving out in monthly income so as you could see they're generating big premiums but they're never giving out the whole thing Right, and we're gonna look at the the distribution policy policy in a second. But I just want to show you something pretty cool. Look at the difference. Remember March 2020? That's when COVID started. The volatility in the stock market. Look at this big jump in premium. So you have a 4.41 percent. That's just in one month, guys. You're generating 4.41 percent yield, basically your interest, in only one month in March. And you could see that they, you know, when the stock market is volatile, like in 2020, the more volatile it is, the bigger the premiums are. But you could see that they never give out more than 1%, right? So they're generating 2.32%, they give out one. 3.39, they give out one. And in the months where the, the volatility is higher, I remember at the end of the year, it was higher. It calmed down in the middle of the year, then it started getting higher. So you could actually see for QYLD, RYLD, XYLD, every single month, how much premium they're generating and how much they're giving out uh, in income here. So you could see in 2022, the volatility started, you could see these massive, massive premiums here for the NASDAQ. So what determines how much they give out and what do they do with the rest of the money, right? That's, that's the key question. Well, it's right here, guys. If you look, scroll down here, you have the general guideline for the monthly distributions for QYLD, RYLD, XYLD, and DGIA. So the monthly distribution, um, is approximately capped, so it's limited to the lower of half the premium received or 1% of the net asset value. And that is the entire key to understanding QYLD, RYLD, XYLD, and DJIA. So every month they will give out um, the lower of, there's two, there's two options, right? Either half of the premium or 1% of the total value of the fund. So whichever one is lower out of those two, that's what they're going to give out. So that's why you always see if the premium is pretty much more than double one per, if the premium is higher than 2%, guys, the, it's always going to be one, they're always going to give out 1%, right? So they're making 3.62. Uh, what's lower, half of that or 1%? Obviously it's 1% because half of, half of 3.62 would be uh, one point. I don't know, seven or something like that. So they're going to give out 1%. So they basically, they they always, they never pay out uh, the amount that they're making. They always pay out less than the premiums they're generating. And what do they do with the rest? It gets reinvested into the fund, right? The excess amount of option premium received, if, apl if applicable, is reinvested into the the fund. So that is the very important thing to understand. So people who say, you know, QYLD is just going to go down and down and down and never going to recover. Well, even let's say that if the covered call is exercised every single month, which is not a great scenario, which is typical in a bull market, but in a flat or down market, there's, there's going to be a lot more chance that the call is not going to be exercised. Even if it is exercised every single month, there's always a portion of the big giant premiums that gets reinvested in the fund, which helps the fund grow. They will buy more stocks inside the fund. So this is a great outline. I hope you, you, you really understand how the distribution policy works uh, for QYLD, RYLD, XYLD, DGI. It's the same strategy uh, throughout uh, all four of them. Now, one thing that I noticed is that for XYLD, you see that it doesn't really uh, follow that guideline. And I did reach out to Global X. And by the way, I have a, a great video coming out right after this one where I'm going to talk to the income director, guys. He's the director of the income suite at Global X. And I'm, I'm basically going to confirm with the main guy, with the main income guy, Global X, everything we just talked about. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to ask him the question. So you'll hear it from, uh, from his mouth as well, the official response. So you might see XYLD. I noticed that, you know, it's doing 50, but it's giving out 50. Well, I reached out to him and he told me that that this policy here that we went through only took effect in August of 2020. So that's why you see in August of 2020, you see it's 
a lot different, right? It's 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 a lot higher. So uh, that po this policy here for XYLD in particular only took effect in August 2020. So you c it, it's very easy to understand because it, they just do a rinse and re repeat every single month, guys. So hopefully now this document is really the key document to to look at when understanding these funds. So last couple of things I want to talk about is the actual performance of QYLD which is the cover, the NASDAQ 100 cover call ETF, and we'll compare it to QQQ, which is just a regular NASDAQ 100. So covered call ETFs, everyone, typically outperform when the market is very volatile, when the market is flat and, and going down because of those big option premiums, they cushion, right? You're, you have a cushion or, or a safety net uh, when stock prices go down. So let's just see be, uh, the, the performance because you'll actually see that it's true. So for QILD, if we look at the past one year performance, which we know has been not not a great time for the market, although the market is slightly recovering now. I'm filming this in April, but the last year, you know, mostly in 2022, the NASDAQ performance hasn't done well, right? So QILD is at minus 7.71%. This includes the, the distributions, of course, okay? If we compare that to the QQQ ETF, in the last year, it's at minus 14.81%. Now, uh, just to be completely honest, this performance is at, as of the end of March, whereas this one is at the end of April. And I know the NASDAQ recovered a little bit in March. So take this with a grain of salt. It's not my fault. Invesco didn't update their numbers. You can see here it's as of the end of April. But let's just say it's minus 12 or minus 10. Either way, QYLD in the last year is outperforming, is doing much better than QQQ. And there's the proof right there. Same thing with the S&P 500 just slightly. So if you look at VOO, which is just a Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, last year is minus 7.9. But if we look at the S&P 500 performance details, it's, mi it's minus 7.75. So it's a tad better. So what you need to expect is that these ETFs will outperform their equivalent without the covered calls during volatile or bad times. That's because they're making big, big premiums and uh, that cushions the, the stock price decline. But the trade-off is slightly higher fees, of course, and drag when the market picks up. So because of the options writing, the very aggressive option writing, if the NASDAQ 100 takes off, QYLD is going to have a lot of drag. It's, it's, it, it is going to go up, but it's going to take a lot longer because they're writing those calls. But remember that it does grow uh, by default every single month, no matter what, because they're never giving out all those premiums. The rest is being reinvested into QYLD, XYLD, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a quick note about performance there. So these ETFs are basically doing exactly what they're designed to do. It's, it's a set in stone, rinse and repeat approach. So like I'll discuss with Global X, this is great for clients who or investors who they, they don't want any surprises. They, they know what's happening every single month and they really want to maximize income. And then of course you have the, the, the Gs, which is a half-half approach. Last thing I want to cover, and I know I'm going to get this question, is taxes. How are the, the distributions taxed? Well, you, you know, there's tax documents if you go to the bottom, but uh, lucky for you, you know me, you know this channel. I am in contact with Global X, and they provided me a nice little summary here. So you're pretty much going to expect everyone, mostly during bad years, during negative, you know, during the ret mostly return of capital, which a lot of people think is just your money come back, coming back to you. I'm not going to get into that now. It's not just your own money coming back to you. See rock video, my, my two rock videos where I explain that. But for QYLD, here's a breakdown every year, guys. So it's you're pretty much going to expect mostly regular dividend and short-term capital gains. This is, this is, of course, on the U.S. This is the U.S. tax code, which is different from the Canadian tax code. So I don't have much knowledge, but in good years, so 2020 wasn't that good you have a, a most of it in return of capital, right? And the rest in short-term capital gain or regular ordinary income, ordinary dividend. 2021, it was a phenomenal year. There's zero return of capital. It's all regular income. 2022, not a good year, along, uh, mostly in rock. So that's that's the trend you could expect in terms of taxes. And the same goes for XYLD. It's pretty much the same story. You see in bad years like 2022 and 2020, a lot of return of capital. In the good years, you'll get more capital gain. Uh, short-term capital gain, regular income. Same thing for, for RYLD. So hopefully um, that answers your, your tax question of how these distributions are taxed. Now for Canadians, if you, exa for example, hold this QYLD, RYLD in a regular cash account, you um, don't quote me on this, but the portion that's return of capital is it's also return of capital 
for us. I know this because I've had QYLD in my cash account and I did see a, a return of capital adjustment when I did have it. So return of capital is not going to be taxed also for us Canadians. And if you have this in a non-registered account, but the portion, this portion here is probably going to be taxed as foreign income. All right. So hopefully that answers also the tax question. So guys, if you have any other questions for QYLD, RYLD, XYLD, something is not clear, please let me know. I hope this was uh, you know, very informative for you. Make sure to check out the, 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 the site of QYLD, RYLD, XYLD. Again, the key document that really helped me understand exactly what's going on is the uh, Global X monthly covered call report. And I'm very excited to announce that I had already did a Q&A with the uh, income director at Global X. So we're going to go through all these questions. He's going to confirm all these uh, statements that I've made. And hopefully uh, by the end of these two videos, you will be a master at understanding these funds so you could actually cut out or ignore the crap that most other YouTubers are talking about it on YouTube. All right, that's it. Take care, guys. Hey, don't go yet. I have some important reminders, including some more recent ones, and I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. And for everything that I'm about to discuss, the links in it and info are in the video description below. So first of all, if you didn't know yet, I do offer a one-on-one -on -one coaching session where you'll have a one-hour Zoom call with me where you can ask me all the questions you want and I'll help you and assist you best I can. Just remember that I'm not a licensed or registered financial advisor or planner. So to book a session, go on my website, passiveincomeinvesting.ca and right there on the homepage on the left-hand side, there is a small video Video, watch that video to know how to book a one-on-one -on -one properly with yours truly. Also on my website, you could purchase my digital product, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package, which is on version 4 right now. It comes with lifetime updates, so you only have to buy it once. And this is really a reference tool or a companion tool to help you build your own portfolio according to your needs and your objectives. It has uh, lists of funds. It has sample portfolios for both Canadian investors and American investors. So make sure to check it out uh, on my website. I actually created a video which uh, shows the product from A to Z because I don't want you to spend money unless you know exactly what you're getting. So make sure to check that video out on my website. And don't take my word for how good it is. Check out the reviews. There's over 300 of them and they are all 100% real reviews. So Here's some more um, updated news or recent news. I am now on Blossom, a new investing app designed for investors. I've been using it for a few weeks now. I think it's really, really great. It has a really cool feature where users could actually add and share their portfolios and what they're buying and selling every day. So you could actually link your investing account so it's uh, updated automatically on a daily basis. I recently added my own main portfolio so you could follow how my portfolio is doing live and what I buy every month. Really, really cool. It's like a mix of Facebook and Twitter, but specifically for investing. So get on your phone, click on the link in the video description below and download the app. It's 100% free. So you two could share your portfolio. Just remember to look for me and follow me. My username is Adrian PII altogether. Also, I do have a referral link for Quest Trade. So you can get $50 uh, worth of free stock purchases. This is the Canadian discount broker that I use and I recommend. Unlike Wealthsimple, the other popular discount broker in Canada, you, uh, you could drip everything you want. It has all the stocks and it also has a dual currency accounts. Very, very uh, convenient if you're buying both Canadian stocks and American stocks. I have a Quest Trade video, by the way, which shows you, gives you a little tour uh, of the fe feature. So make sure to check that out. I also have a referral link for Passive. This is the portfolio tracking tool that I use to consolidate all our accounts to get a nice bird's eye view. So you can cons for, you know, consolidate all the inf information together for easy tracking and stats as well. Also, our Facebook group, Passive Income Investing, is now an invite-only private group. So to join it, you need to click click on the on the link in the video description below and give the group a like to get invited. So we take pride in making this one of the best investing Facebook groups out there with over 13,000 members. There's no scams, there's no spammers and the negative and doomsday people, we kick them out right away. Also follow us on Instagram if you want a little bit more of our personal journey here in Panama. And lastly, just remember everyone, I am not a licensed or registered financial advisor. This channel is all about my personal investing journey and how I invest to generate high passive income from a diversified portfolio of high yield funds. It's for educational purposes only. So don't forget to do your own research and due diligence. And of course, stay safe, everyone. Stay healthy. And of course, stay passive. See you next time.